books. And today I'm yet to tell you about our sponsor, George M. James. He's also known as Jim J. Uh, but let me first tell you about this fellow. And let me also say to you that if you like the Legacy Conversation channel, if you like what we're discussing here and what we speak about, and the people who's contributing, uh, then you would absolutely love the GMJ books. Uh, because he speaks the same language, and you know, whatever he said in his books were confirmed by the guests. It, it's quite funny to me, I sometimes sit and do the interview and of course I've read all the books and uh, it just seems a bingo, bingo, bingo all the time. Uh, things which he predicted, things he talked about, things which he wrote about and then the guest comes on and they just confirm it one after the other. It's really amazing. Uh, what is also amazing is how quickly he wrote the books. Um, he wrote the book once every three weeks. And he did so for about four years, and he is now at 51 books, the last one being Sierra Whiskey, which is uh, SW for his book, which is selling very well, and you know, it's a great read. But it's the same. The, the writing style and the way what um, Sierra Whiskey is written is exactly the same as any other GMJ book. So it's very easy to read. And it's of course historically 100%. Lots of military history in it and uh, much more modern. That's perhaps the difference. Uh, the GMJ books, the fictional, as well as the ones with non fiction, plays off in modern times, not 40, 50 years ago. Now, what does this guy write about? COVID counterterrorism and uh, counter espionage operations. And most of them, except for one book, takes place in Sub Saharan Africa. And there's a couple of main characters which you will find in all the books, and I'm talking fictional now, not talking uh, uh, non-fiction. Non-fiction is a different story. Uh, you know, where you, it, it's a different writing style as well, but still, and that's perhaps a secret here, is that George and James found out that if you read a story, if you hear a story, you normally remember. That is why you can probably recall what France for e or anybody who is on the show, what they say, because they told you a story, even if it's true, it's still a story. But if they had like PowerPoint presentations, I guarantee you, you would not remember one word. Uh, so what he's doing is, he's using his books to teach. And because you have a story, the African way of teaching, you normally remember. And he has the same main characters, was actually based upon real people, but of course combinations of them. Uh, no one person can be that good or that lucky. Uh, but you have the overall commander, a woman called Angelique Dawson. And she's quite pretty, and she's dangerous. And in the book she heads the uh, South African Secret Service counter-terrorism desk. Later she takes, takes over the counter-espionage desk as well. Doesn't like him, doesn't like counter-espionage, she likes espionage. Uh, she's a widow, she's dangerous, as I said, she's a Krav Maga expert, she speaks German, French, Afrikaans, English, later she learns Zulu and Portuguese. Uh, she's excellent with explosives, she knows all weapon systems. And what's fascinating about this woman is that she is willing to kill, she's willing to do what is necessary. Uh, you know, for many times, you know, for many years, and this is not criticism, but Sometimes I think that the South African authors always have to write these books which are like, oh my god, I'm so sorry I'm alive. You know, it's almost like, you know, the English came and they burnt the farm and it is just this horrible story or, oh, it's this girl and she goes to a big city and there she gets pregnant and oh, it's just a horrible story. You know, it's almost like, oh, I'm so sorry I'm alive. Now, TMJ doesn't write like that. He does not apologize. Um, his characters are going to do what is necessary and they're good at what they do. And they always go back into history. Before any mission, they would look at what history did and then they would tell the story and then they would go out and do what is necessary. So Angelique is supported by two main characters. Uh, one is called Foxtrot, 
sometimes it's a free fox trot, it's his name. Um, he's got a mate called Hjeltslom, Peter in the belly, I'll come to him. Uh, both are ex uh, police special task force uh, members, uh, both qualified for um, army special forces as well and uh, went on operations and now we're on a deep cover uh, with a unit which is informally known as the eggbreakers. Now the word eggbreaker come from the idea that sometimes you have to break an egg to uh, get results. Uh, these are not books for uh, liberals, these, these are books for conservative people, I mean they like religious people, they, um, they know what's right and wrong in their eyes and again, they will do whatever they will do. And in the book, well the book series, it comes out that they were basically told to leave special forces. There's a bit of a story behind it as well, of course. Uh, but they were told to, to leave special forces in the, in, the, in the early 90s, late 80s, and to go into Africa and create their own networks. Now it's funny that Colonel Franz Fauré <laughs> Uh, he speaks about Project Ivory, where a similar type of thing was happening where they went in civilian dress acting as spies in Africa. Now, of course, Franz Fauré has got nothing to do with it, James A. Books, I just want to say that. But it's fascinating to me that in the books, long before Franz Fauré started speaking, um, James A. starts speaking about the secret unit, uh, which is under the command of Angelique Dawson and it was reactivated after the bomb explosions at the embassies, the US embassies in, I believe in Kenya and one other place. And that's when this unit became active. And she simply arrived and said she has command and she will kick ass until she gets command. And Foxtrot's in love with her. I mean, he's um, took one look at this woman and he decided that, well, they should be together, but of course, she's being a bit otherwise, it takes him a lot of years to admit that. But in the background there is a bit of romance going on. Uh, there's absolutely no scenes of sexual um, gratification or anything like that. Nothing. What you find in these books are just facts. You know, it's a good story, yes, it's running a good story in the background, but uh, behind that, you will not know whether this happened or didn't happen. And the reason for that is that many of the fictional stories which he wrote is based upon actual plans. In other words, if you worked out how you're going to attack uh, a certain place, uh, then uh, in the story they would do it exactly the same way as in the plan. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, Fjellson, Peter in the belly is the ultimate professional. He's a black man, he's a Zulu guy. Uh, he was with uh, Fox Trotting Police Special Forces. Then they captured, uh, during an exercise, they captured an army intelligence officer and they worked him a bit and then they had to leave so they went on uh, operations behind enemy lines. They learned a lot and when Fox Trot the Special Forces, then so did um, Gilslam and they are very, very good friends. Okay, so that's a background. Now, now what's behind this? Because Jim J. say in every single book, he says he doesn't write the book for pleasure. He writes a book because he wants a message to go over, or he wants something, or something to be learned from it. And it's uh, so that almost everybody who read the books, who read it, uh, will say that they learned something. I've never heard of anybody who said to me that, no, they just read it and no, they didn't learn anything about it. No, no, that, that's not possible. Uh, you do learn a lot from history, previous operations. You will learn a lot about political uh, shenanigans as well, because these are modern books. They basically start playing off here in the early 2000s, and they play off until about 2012. And there's a wide scope behind it on what's happening in the world, uh, which is really something you will not read anywhere else, and that's the reason why it's... Um, not banned, but uh, heavily suppressed. It's uh, like, you know, the mainstream media do like to play their little games. And so they try to keep these books away from people. And then you have to ask yourself why. And the other reason why he writes these books or wrote them is uh, to warn. 
um, because he really knows military history, he knows military tactics, he knows um, probably what's going to happen in the future also because he can link the dots together. And I have to say the man is not scared of talking, he's not scared of, um, of speaking his mind. And it is also so that he doesn't rate the American military or NATO military highly at all. And you can say why, and then he will have many, many reasons why he's saying it. It's not a matter of saying, I don't like you, it's a matter I don't like you for the following facts. They are unlike any other books. They are not well known in South Africa uh, for many reasons. Political is one of them. Which is quite unique about the GMJ books is that he's using every book to teach you about something. So, if you take, say, code name Alphabet 32, and he has these strange names because there's a lot of codes in the books. Code name Alphabet 32, he speaks about and introduces the reader to the best anti tank missile in the world, which is a Mokopa, South African one, better than anything which anybody else can produce. By the time you finish a red book, you will know how the Makopa works and how it should be deployed and how it is deployed. Now in code name Blue Tank, he talks about the best short-range air-to-air missile. It is the Denel Agile Daughter V3E. Now, this is how it goes on and on in the books. In code name Willow Bay, in code name Willow Bay, he describes exactly how you will attack even a warship by ways of stealth. You will not use helicopters, you will not use a rubber dock, you will not use a surface vessel, and you will not swim to that ship, and yet you will get onto that ship without them even knowing you there. That had massive implication in counter-terrorism. In code name Angelique, he starts writing about the use of gliders, military gliders in counter-terrorism. It is amazing. I mean, this is forward thinking. And sadly, I've heard that the Chinese military is implementing a lot of what he's writing about. Many of his books, like Codename Wrangler, is used by some SWAT teams as uh, material to read. Because he wrote four books on uh, Hostage Rescue. Wrangler is where an aircraft is involved. Then there's one also on uh, trains, and there's one on ships, and there's one on passenger vessels. What comes out in his books are just amazing. In one book, I named Phantom, he starts warning that in South Africa there's something like 54,000 tons of explosives in the depots, which are now ready to explode. They've never been used. They're not being disposed of, and once they go, there's going to be a, a huge explosion because you're talking there about two or three, even four atomic bombs of uh, Hiroshima size. So he brings out all these things, and then he looks also at the uh, international scenario, and he sees a lot of things which he wants about uh, in terms of strategic power. So they are books like nothing else you've ever seen before. I would urge you to try the books that are available on Amazon if they are popular enough or people really want them in paper it can be arranged to have them printed in South Africa but it's not going to happen unless people actually order them because there's obviously financial considerations as well Lastly, let me say to you, if it wasn't for George M. James legacy conversations will not exist and that is why we're going to have at least one or two of his books every month on the book show, on Legacy Books, introduce you to it, and hopefully you will find the time to try them out. They are really worth your time to read. If you like the Legacy Conversation channel, you will absolutely love George M. James. It is really good books.